Hi, Trunk here again. I'm going to go through an introduction to the ultrasonics experiment that you'll be doing as a part of your modern lab experience. Okay, so this is another one of those survey labs where you're going to do a bunch of mini experiments using our new ultrasonics equipment. Uh, so what I'm going to do with Dr. Mulhall is just go through very quickly how to collect some data doing the very basic, let me make sure I get the, the title of this one correct here. Oh, that's good. It's experiment number three, and it's a first reflection mode experiment. So you're going to be doing a bunch of reading before this lab. I believe we're forcing you to read about 40 pages of the man manual, so when you come in here, you're more, uh, you, know, you have a little bit more information about what some of this equipment is doing and where some of the knobs and connections are located. So chapter, or chapter three or experiment three is going to be one of the first things you, you do. So what you're going to do, it's going to walk you through how to connect some of these BNC connectors from the oscilloscope to the ultrasonics equipment and get you to properly display those two signals. One's going to be connected to trigger, the other is going to be connected to RF signal. And just note that the BNC connection here, whatever one that is, the, the label is going to be listed directly underneath it. Dr. Mullen was laughing because yeah. that's kind of confusing. So, for example, trigger, right? <laughs> right. Trigger the, 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 the connector is going to be above the word trigger, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to do the exact same experiment using the software on the computer. So I actually already have it set up. What we have is one of our transducers, and this is what a transducer looks like. All right, and it has some crazy connector at the end that they're calling a LIMO connector. Uh, I don't know, you can kind of see in there, it's kind of a, just a proprietary connector that the equipment uses. That's going to go ahead and connect to either the receiver or the transmitter probe outlet. For this experiment three, we're going to be using one of these transducers as both the transmitter and the receiver. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put this transducer, which by the way, this business end of the transducer is very delicate. You're going to want to make, not, make sure you don't slam it off the floor of the table or put something sharp against it. You're going to want to take care of this end. Okay. What we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to take some signals and send them into a piece of material. So he actually, Dr. Mahal over here actually has one of the transducers already set up, ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send a signal from that red transducer into this clear piece of acrylic. Now notice, he ha he, we have to make a good connection between the transducer and the acrylic, so we're gonna be using this stuff. It's a transmissions gel, which makes the connection even better. So you kind of just put a little glob on there, and make sure there's a good connection between the transducer and the piece of uh, acrylic. All right. So I already have my settings on the oscilloscope ready to go. You're going to have to uh, walk through all the instructions, go through them step by step to get to the place where we're at in this video. So when I go ahead and turn on uh, our ultrasonic echo scope, we're going to see two signals pop up on the oscilloscope. All right. This is the starting point for actually starting to send a signal. Right now, I have the transmitter at zero, meaning I'm not actually sending anything out, all right? And I also have the receiver settings at zero, so I'm really not gonna pick up anything either. So this is what I want you to do. The original signal here is gonna be this blue blip that you see, which is connected to channel two, all right? As I increase the transmitter knob, you're gonna see the signal is increasing, and I'm gonna max it all the way to 30. Now. You might be able to tell, but you can see a little bit of a, a blip up around right here. But as I increase the receiver amplification, essentially, you're going to see that I'm going to get a signal. Okay? So I have my original signal here that's going into the acrylic block. It's moving toward the other side. There's a reflection on the other side of the acrylic, and then it's coming back, and that same uh, transmitter is also receiving the data back as well. All right. Now, the time it takes for that back and forth motion, so our total round trip is going to be the time between those blips. So if I move the position here, each one of these blocks horizontally is 10 microseconds. So if I count the number of blocks between blips, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it looks like the total round trip time is 60 microseconds. Now you're going to have to figure out how to, you know, why is that significant and throughout the actual experiment. So this is how you do it here with... Um, with the oscilloscope and the ankoscope. And if you want, you can try a different block. So let's try a different block. This one's half the length. Half the size. So we'll see if that affects where the signals are. I'm going to, little, <coughs> I'm going to get a little bit of transition gel here onto it. Try and get a good contact. Ah, look at that. So I'm going to drop the, uh, 
receiver amplification down a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll leave it up a little bit because now look, we're getting three signals. We have the original, we're getting one reflection, and then we're getting a second reflection. second reflection. How about that? That's pretty cool. Now, let me move this just so we get it to, actually, that's actually perfect. Because look, now for the half length cylinder compared to the first one, our signal back and forth time around your time is only 30 microseconds. And then we get another 30 microseconds, we get a third Slowly. signal. Okay? So you're <laughs> going to work through a bunch of experiments dealing basically with that equipment. Now, you can also do this with a scan, which is a piece of software on the computer. I'm going to go to all programs and then go to GAMPT and then choose a scan. Now this piece of software is going to do basically essentially what the oscilloscope does. So, Majid, could you get a side by side here? So you're going to see at zero is our original signal, just like here was our original signal on the oscilloscope, and you're getting the same thing here. So look, you're at 30 microseconds, right at 60 microseconds. So you're going to do the same type of experiment right here with the software. It's just that the software just kind of gives you the answer. We want you to learn more about using the equipment in this modern lab, so that's why we're having you also do it on the oscilloscope. Now there's one more cool demo that we're going to show you in the video and I'm going to send it over to you to Dr. Mahal. This is another feature of the software that you really can't do with the oscilloscope, but it's a really cool thing. So he'll describe what this big black <coughs> lock is over here. So this is a, there's a, a, a mode with the software where it gives you a waterfall graph um, where <coughs> we'll see a beam. Could you just actually hit A mode? We're or, on A, you want B mode? B there? mode, B yeah. Mode. There we go. Now can you hit start? <coughs> sure. This is called the waterfall. And you see, as, if, as you go down, that's, that's uh, in, so in, in effect, that's distance. So the, the signal went down, and at this, so, sorry, this is time. At this time, we received an echo, and here's another echo. So if you look at that gap, that tells you how far through the medium uh, the, reflected, uh, the, the, the reflecting object is. So the reflecting object in this case is this end here. This is an abrupt change in density between acrylic and air. So this change in density reflects the ultrasound, and it, the ultrasound goes back like this. If I replace this, actually let's do this for a laugh. I'm gonna, can you hit stop and start again? Sure. Ready? Yeah. Now I'm gonna do this. And nothing you happens because I, didn't have, I needed some gel. That's okay, let's do something even more cool. Let's do this. Suppose I start here. Ready? Ready, go. There's something scattering shallow, Oh look, they're scattering objects. Hold on a second. Sorry, I had a bad connection. Can you go again? Sure. Here we go. Go. Oh, that's okay. better. There. Look at that. Look See at those? these blips? They're scattering objects closer and closer to the surface as I scan along this thing. Look at those blips. So there's something inside this block that as I move along, there's a change in an abrupt change in density. I don't know, is it becoming more dense or less dense? I don't know. Uh, it's a detective thing, though. You could figure out. Uh, you could figure out the. This is made of acrylic, so you should know what the density is, what the mass of this is, and maybe there's holes through it or something like that. But there's something causing a, a, the ultrasonic waves to echo back. There's an abrupt change. There's an interface, a change in density. Changes in density are very interesting for ultrasonics because they detect kidney stones and uh, tumors and stuff like that. So the biophysics majors will be particularly interested in the behavior of this. And these waterfall graphs are good for, for when you're doing, um, like just searching around to find out is there something inside a sample. And there'll be more on that in the, in the experiment. All right, that's everything. Uh, Michael Faraday, write that timestamp down. See you later.